Christ's command to his followers before his ascension to heaven was for them to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, all Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Our Lord did not intend for the good news of his death and resurrection to stay local, but instead it was to be taken globally. In this third section of Acts, the adventure continues as the gospel is taken to the ends of the earth. Let's join Scott Pauley now for today's study. We are in Acts chapter number 10 in the middle of a most fascinating conversation between a Gentile man named Cornelius and a Jewish believer named Peter, and they're talking about Jesus. And Peter is giving the truth, and Cornelius is receiving the truth. It's beautiful. And very shortly, we're going to return to everything that Peter said because it's one of the great gospel messages of the book of Acts. But before we do that, and before we go any further in our study of this adventure, I want to pause and back up for just a moment and show you a common thread, a theme that is woven throughout all of Acts chapter number 10 to this point, and it is the emphasis on prayer. Did you notice where all this started? Back in Acts chapter number 10 and verse number 2, God spoke to Cornelius while he was praying. The Bible says he prayed to God always. All right, so God spoke to Cornelius in the place of prayer. Then God had to speak to Peter, remember, and get Peter ready and willing. Where did he speak to Peter? Well, verse number 9, Peter went up to the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. So God spoke to Cornelius while he was praying. God spoke to Peter while he was praying. In fact, throughout the rest of the passage, there is this constant reminder of prayer. For example, in verse 31, Cornelius Thy prayer is heard. Friend, I want to point out to you that the gospel only advances, uh, that we are only usable as we stay in the place of prayer. Prayer is what opens the door. Do you remember I said to you when we started in Acts chapter 10 that this is the chapter where the door of faith opens to the Gentiles. This is the chapter where the gospel door swings open wide so that Everybody can receive the gospel. Well, let me talk to you today about using the key. What is the key that opens the door? I believe the key that opens the door is prayer. Prayer is the key to your family getting saved. Prayer is the key to divine appointments. Prayer is the key to world evangelism. We only move forward on our knees. This is very important because do you remember back in Matthew chapter number 16, Jesus said something to Simon Peter. He said to Peter, remember Peter's great confession of faith, uh, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, and Jesus blessed him and said, thou art Peter, upon this rock I'll build my church, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The very next verse, Matthew 16, 19, 19, says this, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He says to Simon Peter, I'm giving you some keys. Now, what are keys? Keys are signs of access. Keys open the door, right? All right. And in the passage, Matthew chapter number 16, he connects earth and heaven. What connects earth and heaven? Prayer does that. Here's what I believe. I believe it was through prayer that God allowed Peter to be the one to unlock the door, to open the door of faith to the Gentiles, to open the gospel door to those who had never heard. Peter was given the keys to the kingdom, keys that would open up the whole world to the gospel message. In Acts chapter 2, the door opened to Israel there in Jerusalem. But in Acts chapter 10, the door opens to the Gentiles. And may I speak as a Gentile for a moment and say, I thank God that happened. Now, this apostolic gift was limited to him. Uh, Some people have made uh, it out that Peter had uh, this special authority, and uh, he was the the first pope, and he was the first uh, religious leader. That's not the point of this passage. The point of this passage was that he was a humble follower of Jesus that was given these keys so that access could be granted to all people so that Cornelius could know God as surely as Peter knew God. 
so that the Gentiles could come to faith in Christ as surely as the Jews would be offered uh, their Messiah in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so there's a great open secret here for us, a great application to our lives that the keys were always used in prayer. Look, everybody needs a place of prayer. Peter had a housetop. Everybody needs a time of prayer. There was a certain hour set aside for prayer. Uh, Peter had a great purpose in prayer. What was it? To find out what God wanted, to hear from heaven. So let me give you just a handful of observations from Acts 10 about using the keys, about being a person of prayer, and what happens when we actually pray. First of all, when we pray, God answers the prayers of others. This is beautiful because in the first nine verses, God's answering the prayers of a man Peter didn't even know. He was going to come to know him. His name was Cornelius. Uh, But may I say to you that as we pray, God is working on the other end. Cornelius didn't know all that he was praying for, uh, but God was about to show him, and God was about to do more than he asked. So when we pray, God answers the prayers of others. Uh, Secondly, when we pray, God prepares us for the work he has for us to do. Now from verse 10 down to verse number 18, Peter has this great vision. And God is teaching him. God is speaking to him. Look, you don't pray to get your will done in heaven. You pray so that God's will will be done on earth. You don't pray to change God's mind. You pray so that God will change your mind, bring your thinking in line with his divine thoughts. So when you pray, God answers the prayers of others. When you pray, God prepares you for the work he has for you to do. Number three, When you pray, the Holy Spirit speaks. In verse number 19, while Peter was thinking on this vision, the Spirit said, see, in real prayer, you don't do all the talking. You begin to listen and follow the divine promptings. This is truly what it means to pray in the Spirit, to be led of the Holy Spirit of God. Then number four, when you pray, God gives definite direction. In verse number 20, the Holy Spirit says, Arise, therefore, and get thee down and go with them, Doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Look, if you need direction today, if you need divine leadership, then get in the place of prayer. Confidence grows out of time spent in the presence of God. You may go into God's presence with lots of question marks, but you will come out, maybe not knowing everything. Peter didn't understand everything God was about to do, but at least he knew the next step. And right now, that's all you have to know. Get in the place of prayer today. Then number five, When we pray, God will use us to see others saved. That's the whole point of the passage. When you come down to verse 33 and verse 34, God opens Cornelius' heart, God opens Cornelius' home, and all of these people come to faith in Jesus Christ. Would you do this? Would you pray today that God would give you someone? Just ask. That's a prayer God will answer. Pray, Lord, give me a Cornelius. Make a divine appointment for me. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but if you turn one page to the next chapter, Acts 11, verse 18, the Bible says, When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Friend, when you pray, truth advances to the entire world. Not just to one, but to many. See, prayer is what opened the door to us. The door of prayer is open, and as we pray, God opens the door to others. See, you are here today knowing Christ as a result of somebody who prayed and obeyed God. And I want to tell you, some things never change. Prayer is the key, and it's a key we all can use. It's authority and access to heaven. And as we pray, God will open the door. Though no more scripture is being written, The story of the furtherance of the gospel is being written at this very moment, and we get to be part of that story. The heart of our Savior is as passionate for the lost today as it was just before He ascended in Acts 1. Will you get in on what God is doing in the world today to reach the lost with the gospel? This is why Enjoying the Journey exists to encourage and to equip you in the work of the gospel, whether it is through the daily broadcast or the many resources on our website. Scott and all of us on the Enjoying the Journey team are passionate about people coming to know Christ as Savior. We pray that you truly will enjoy the journey 
But we also pray that you will bring others with you on your journey of following Christ.